I'm sure you all know who Ross Draws is. Ross Draws is a digital artist who is known for his vibrant colors and incredible style. He also has a YouTube channel where he posts some of his painting processes and showcases some of his art. He also has a digital art bootcamp where he teaches digital art and shares his tips and tricks. So I have watched a lot of his videos and also participated in his digital art bootcamp. So today I wanted to try and analyze one of his paintings and try and replicate it. And then we'll try to do our own painting from what we've learned from it. So the sketch is very simple. He just outlines with very little detail. And one interesting thing is that he doesn't use black for his sketch. And I think the reason for that is that he leaves some of the sketch in the final painting. So he uses, for example, in this one, he uses a red color for the sketch. And then once the sketch is done, I've seen him do this next step in a few different ways, but the way that I prefer from him is that he makes a selection of the outline and on a new layer adds one color as the undertone or the midtone. And then he has the sketch layer on top of the painting layer in multiply mode. And if the sketch layer is too bold, and too uh, overpowering, you can reduce its opacity. Then you can create a new layer on top of the solid color or the midtone layer and start thinking about light and shadow. So the undertone or the midtone or the main solid color itself is not very saturated. And then he adds a saturation using the light and shadows, especially the shadows. So now using a hard round brush with a bit of softness, that's the main shadow shapes. In this case, the light is from the top right, so the shadow shapes will be based on that. He simplifies things into shapes, so what he, he likes to say is that don't really think too much about the anatomy and the details of the face, and instead think of things in terms of shadow and light shapes, and try and paint those shadow and light shapes. So when doing shadows, he really increases the saturation a lot and changes the color to go more towards the red to give the skin some of that color variation. And then the lights are less saturated and closer to the yellow. When also painting, he also mentions to think about the environment and add colors from the surrounding into the painting and skin. And in this case, the environment is just the blue sky. So the sky color needs to be a bit reflected into the clothing and the skin and the subject in general, but don't go overboard with it, just add a little bit of that. The, the way he paints hair is that he makes them first in these big shapes, and then he starts going in and adding, again, big shadow and light shapes. So he goes in and adds these shadow shapes first, and then adds the light colors first, and then he goes in and, and adds the really, really dark lines to give a little bit of more detail. Similarly, the highlight color also goes very, very light and adds these extra lines and extra areas to, make, to add more details. And do not try and draw every single strand of hair. That's not how he does it and that's not how he makes it look so good. It's just the general shapes and adding big light and shadow shapes into the hair. And then he keeps doing the same thing and, and adds and looks more into detail and refines it more and more until he's happy with it. He also uses the curve tool a lot to make adjustments in the colors. So I try to do that in different stages and different steps. So now let's try and do my own painting and try and use the same methods and techniques to do a painting for myself. So similar to before, we just start with the sketch. I try to make it as rough as possible with little details and mostly just outlines. And then again, using the lasso tool, made a selection and just painted the whole thing with just one, uh, one color. And I also made sure that my sketch is done with the, the red color and not black. And then as I mentioned, we go a little bit more towards the red and darker to do the shadow shapes and slowly, slowly using the round brush, just adding the big shapes for shadow and then also doing the light in the same, the same way. And then after that, just simply adding the other parts of the painting, like the hair and the clothing. And then after that, something that I really liked in the way he does things is that 
he has some of these really hard edges in some spots like around the face and really does define it almost like doing line art but with the red color and it really gives it shape and and a really nice effect so i i did that as well and then slowly going into smaller brush size to add more and more details so once i get uh, the painting to a general place where it's it's complete where a lot of the shapes are done i merge everything and i start playing with the curve tool so i play with the curve tool to kind of push the lights and shadows a little bit more and then he also uses the color balance mode to adjust the mid-tone the highlights and the shadows so he he chooses those settings and plays around a little bit with the color balance for each one in case he wants to change, for example, the shadow colors to be more cool or more warm, depending on what he wants. And something that I didn't mention earlier was the photo bashing techniques that he uses. So he uses a lot of that in his painting. So I tried to do that. So for the clothing here, I, so I just found a pattern online and I just put it in Photoshop and using a clipping mask, I try to put it on top of the area that I want and using overlay or multiply mode, play around with it a little bit to try and get it to the shape that you want. And then I did the same thing with the background. I found another image similar to what he did of the sky with just stars and you can see the background of it was black. So use the screen mode to put it in the background where it kind of eliminates all that black and it just has some of the stars there and then you can also like i did here paint over that and add more details so this was really my attempt in studying raw straws and trying to replicate his art and also try and do a painting of my own using his style and if you found this helpful and you want to see me do a study of Wolop, you can click on this video here.